Hi, I'm Shatish. I run my own software startup. I'm a 17 year old high school kid. I hate studying. And <laughs> I run my own startup. I am an investor with GSF, Global Super Agents Forum. We are the largest tech accelerator in India. And I'm going to talk on how technology is changing and can change education. So, being a high school student, I am being involved in tech. I, I get a lot of exposure to how technology can change and is changing education. So let me ask you a question. I want all of you to answer in yes or no. Is technology actually changing education? Yes. yes. Okay. So let's now break this question. Let's go a little over the top. Let's see what technology, education, and changing means. So let's talk about change. This is the literal meaning, the dictionary meaning of change. is to make or to become different or in other words, to make or become better. So there's a misconception which people have. They think that changing their iPhone every year is a change. That's not change. Change is not something which happens once a year or twice a year. Change is not an event, it's a process. So let's talk about technology. Now for geeks like me, how many of you are geeks? <coughs> so we have a few. So for geeks like me, technology is something which doesn't exist yet or doesn't work yet. A device which will be launched 10 years from now is technology. So, to keep it simple, when we talk about technology, it's laptop, smartphone, and tablet. When we get, when we, you hear to this word technology, you think of your laptop, smartphone, and tablet. So, let's move on to education. Now, education is the process of receiving or giving systematic <coughs> instruction, especially at a school or university. This is absolutely false. So <laughs> even if you look at the synonym and say teaching, schooling, instruction, this is not education. So I would like to show you what Albert Einstein once quoted about education, what education actually means. It is a process of wasting half of your life to learn how to waste the remaining half of your life. the schools, school, it's those experiences which help us grow better and better in our life. So in short, I'm going to talk about how we are going to change the way we waste half of our life with something that doesn't exist yet. So how have we changed education? How has technology changed education till now? Sorry for the formatting. So technology and education till now. So from the existence of, of humans, how has technology technology evolved education. So we go back, way back in 30,000 BC, when cave paintings was the first medium of, medium of instruction. We move a little ahead to 105, where paper was invented first in China. Then in 1450, the Gutenberg printing press, which was the first ever printing press in the world. Then in 1910 and 1940, we had the audiovisual age, which is people started teaching using radios and film strips. So this period, 1960 and 1995, is probably <coughs> the period which has seen the most revolution happen. The, we call this as the information age. We had the invention of computers, better <coughs> communication systems, internet. And it was during this period when in 1991, the first smart board was used to teach. 1995, the internet doesn't need any introduction. It didn't only change the way we teach, but it also changed the way we learn, the way we live our lives. And if we talk about now, we live in the interactive age. We are surrounded by devices, laptops, smartphones. And if we look, if we compare it <coughs> from the earlier times, we have moved way back from cave paintings to smart response, smart response devices. <coughs> I would again ask you a question, how are we going to shape the classroom for the future? Now, if I ask this question to any random person, he would say that yes, we are progressing, we, we use laptops to teach, we have projectors, we have this, we have that, we have e-books, we have, well, that's not education. Distributing free laptops or having a book on the internet is not transforming education in any way. So one of my idols, Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel, predicted that 
the processing power of any device doubles every 18 months. So, okay, talking about devices, the smartphone, how many of you have smartphones? So most of us have smartphones. So, you know, the smartphone in your pocket has four times more power than NASA had in 1969. They went to the moon. And all we do is WhatsApp. <laughs> So he also predicted that the price of technology as compared to the progress it's making, the price of technology declines at a rate of 35% every year. So this means that if, if, this, if this statement has been true to a large extent till today, and if it goes like this, soon researchers and educators will have an abundance of new technology which they can use to teach students, and students can use to learn. So low cost means it's affordable, we can have things in rural, rural areas, more access to devices for students and schools, families. So educational research will undergo massive paradigm shifts. So, make this. Okay, let's now take this. Schools must change to accommodate new technology. This is because technology is changing at such a fast pace. Schools must incorporate changes. The focus of the future of education should be on youth, learners, and teachers. So, we must find strategies to harness the power of this fast pace. We, have, we should have new learning experiences and teaching skills. So, this is a truth. How many of you are teachers? Okay, we have a few teachers. I'm sorry for this. <laughs> Students know more <coughs> from the teachers. Just a little. So we need a new school, and if not a new school, we need a new system, which can actually help students learn more. And if we don't do this, the social power of technology soon will force, force us to have a new education system. Educa educators and students need to have a new different mindset, and the future of curriculum has to be different. So, okay, this is the slide is written by stuff. It says current standardized testing. So. If we talk about standardized testing today, it refers to reading, writing, and basic math skills, arithmetic skills. But isn't it obvious every one of us knows how to read and write? So the future of standardized testing, this is just an example, it should involve problem solving skills, communication skills, better critical thinking, information literacy, applied technology, applied technical reasoning, and all these things. So all these things give Words to these only questions. Are changes in learning long term or short term? Who will develop the future of who will develop the content for the future curriculum? How does it compare to the current curriculum? And how will the elements of the process <coughs> of that or content curriculum be integrated? Now these questions are unanswered. I don't have any answer to these. But this is what the problem is. Teachers say that students don't don't need computers, they just need the basics. This is again wrong. Because the truth is that computers and other technology, all the applications, are the basics for every child. So, we come to a conclusion that schools are not getting children ready for the future, how they will use technology in the future, and how they can take advantage of the current technology to grow better. So I would end up with saying what David Thornburg, a renowned educationalist, once said, we are preparing children for their future and not to our own past. Thank you. <laughs>